with that volume, or she might actually end up blowing. It all just depends on what Sean asks of her. But he is providing very specific heat to the very bottom, and then you'll see him going all the way in. That's what we call a flash. We don't want any part of that to get too cold. So we're, it's, it's essentially a maintenance heat. So Deb is gonna tap the pipe. And Sean is using the blades of Sean is using those blades to create a very nice and hard, very sharp edge. And because all of our color is on the outside, we're going to apply a very small button of clear glass, a little um, dot of clear glass to the very bottom and center of that piece so that So that when we apply an additional um, pipe that we call the pen fee, it's going to want to stick to that patch better. And then Deb, after Sean applies that, Deb can prepare what we call the pen fee, which is a solid pipe with a little bit of glass wound onto the end of it, and also shaped in a very specific way. So while Sean makes sure to take flashes or those maintenance heats, Deb is going to start to prepare that punt heat. And both Sean and Deb have to make sure that they're communicating with each other and that one is not hotter than the other. We want to really sync up the temperatures at the bottom of the piece and the punt heat. This is a pretty precarious moment in the glass making process transferring the glass from one pipe to another. Temperatures are high. But Sean and Deb have both been working with glass for quite a long time, so they know when the glass is ready to go. Sticking it on as centered as possible, making any slight adjustments with the tweezers, and then with a dot of water or even just a cold metal tool, we're going to apply some thermal shock to this glass at the jack line, the line that we cut earlier. And then it's going to separate beautifully. And just like that, let's give them a round of applause. So that's going to take a flash or a maintenance heat. Sean's ready for her at the bench. And he may or may not make any last minute adjustments. This is really his last chance to do so. That's me. So the next part of the process is going to be focusing the heat on the top half of this hourglass base. And that's actually going to be the longest heat because it was the coldest part of the of the whole hourglass. And cold to us is relative. It's still around 1,200 degrees, but we need to get it back to a working temperature. So it's gonna take some time to soak in that heat. And while we get that to heat in, I'm gonna pull out, some, get some glass out of the furnace and just show you kind of some of the properties of glass. So I mentioned earlier, hot glass sticks to hot glass. So I can use tweezers to stretch the glass really far, and I can stick it back on. And everywhere it's thicker, it's still going to retain that heat for quite a long time. And where it's thinner, it's already going to cool pretty rapidly. So I can touch this glass, even though minutes earlier, seconds earlier, it was at 2,100 degrees Fahrenheit. What they just did is they inflated the glass. Another tool that we have up here is the Sofietta. It's a cone-shaped tool, basically a metal straw that we're able to blow through. And the, we want to make sure that the opening is within the diameter of this cone so it can create a suction. And it allows us to inflate and puff out the glass after we're no longer on the blow pipe. 
we can't flow through that pipe, it's solid. So you can see the drastic temperature difference. And keep in mind that this is, all the colors that you see are not going to be what they look like tomorrow. So it's still super hot. So the true vibrancy of all the colors aren't going to come through until this is cold. So you all have to come back tomorrow at, 11, at 10 a.m. so that you can really see what these colors look like in true Seahawks spirit. So we're going to start what Sean did also earlier. He, he just pulled the glass and then actually cut it with the cutting tool that we have up here. It's called straight shears. We have two cutting tools. One that cuts glass in a straight line that we just used. Straight shears. And then we have a tool called diamond shears that cut the glass to a point. And while Deb is holding the paddle on the opening, Sean is using the jacks again to open the glass up widen that diameter. So more beeswax on the jacks. I've been told we use organic beeswax, but it's because we're up here in Seattle. I'm using the newspaper again, just to shape and cool the glass. We're very close to being finished with this shape. So the final destination, we can't let it air cool on the marble. If we do, it's going to crack within a few minutes. So we have to put it in this silver box, which is called the annealing oven. The annealing oven is holding all the glass from today at 950 degrees Fahrenheit, which is hot enough that the glass is not going to crack, but cold enough that it won't change shape. And then at the end of the day, we'll start to put it on what we call the annealing cycle, which is a very slow cooling process, very controlled environment, and it'll cool over the course of 10 to 12 hours. And keep in mind that what we're making isn't that thick, but the thicker the glass is, the longer it has to slowly cool. So for something really thick, it may take a few days or weeks. Um, for the super telescope, it took about three years to melt and um, cool down. Deb's got some gloves on that are going to allow her to grab the, the base. Sean's applying some heat and then a little bit of thermal shock to that punty connection. It's going to pop off. Super light tap. And then all the work we make, we sell. So we don't want that connection to be sharp. So we're just smoothing it out. And then it's going to go into the annealing oven. Beautiful base. Let's give Sean and Deb a round of